Do you ever get tired of having to lift your heavy water jug out of its holder every time you need water out of it? Just to spill half of it on the ground anyways? We have an easy to make, inexpensive solution. In this episode, we'll show how you can have running water at your fingertips. This is Wanderlust Overland. Get to there. Let me see it. No, get your own. I want to see No, get your own. All the parts we used, we bought off of Amazon for a grand total of around 120 bucks. In the video description below, we put links to all the main components, which are the tank or jug needs to be a NATO style one because of the wide mouth and because they're durable as hell. A faucet that has a built-in electrical switch that'll send power to the, the submersible pump and just some typical hose and wires. First thing we need to do is cut this retainer ring off the cap. Next, we need to cut this nozzle off. We need to make sure this is nice and flushed with the surface. Now we're very fortunate. The hole in our cap fits this part of our pump really nice. It goes in there nice and snug, but not too snug. Now if yours is too tight, you can make this hole a little bit larger with either a file or a larger drill bit, or you can take a half inch iron pipe sized thread tap and tap threads into this. That's up to you. This is our faucet. It's made by SureFlow. There's part number. Uh, what's really nice about this, it's made for the RV market. So it has this built-in electrical switch, 12 volt, and it, it turns, it swivels and pivots, and this, the head turns uh, for all kinds of adjustability. Mounting the faucet is really simple. Uh, it comes with this little white collar. We have a rubber, a neoprene rubber washer underneath this. Uh, this is just a one inch water meter gasket. That's gonna help to conform to this top a little bit better. Just put that on first. Then we put this in. And then underneath, we have another neoprene rubber gasket. Uh, this is a three quarter inch water meter gasket. That's gonna help conform to the irregularities on the bottom side of this cap. Put that on there, that, this one tight, fits nice and tight on there. And then the uh, nut that comes with the faucet. We'll just thread that on. Now you don't wanna tighten this down too much because you know it is just plastic after all. This is the pump we're gonna be using. It's uh, made in Germany by a company named Comet and model name is Elegant. Ooh. Puts out about two and a half gallons per minute. Uh, there's a lot of different types and sizes of these out there on the market. Um, it's kind of hard to make a choice. We just ended up choosing this. Now to connect the pump to the faucet, we just use some 3 8 inside diameter hose held on with some stainless steel clamps. Now when we're driving around, this pump might have a tendency to swing back and forth in the can and bounce off the sides. We're gonna try a little experiment. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're gonna wrap this pump with this piece of foam. This is uh, cut out of a universal furnace filter. We're just gonna wrap it around and take some zip ties and attach it. Now we did test this foam ahead of time and it doesn't seem to float, so hopefully it'll work. We're also gonna zip tie this power cable to the hose. I've got the wires bundled up coming from the 
pump and the faucet with some shrink tubing. Now we have to pass these wires up through the cap. And to do that, we drill a hole and put in this little grommet. All right, this is how we wire it up. We have positive power coming from the truck that hooks into one of the two blue wires coming from the switch on the faucet. The other blue wire coming from the faucet gets hooked to the brown wire going to the pump. That's your positive. Now the negative side, that's the blue wire coming from the pump and it just gets tied directly to the ground on your vehicle. It's all wired up, nicely shielded with a plug on the end. Now you can wire this up however you want to, but you're going to want to have a plug on the end. We're going to plug ours into a little outlet panel that we made, uh, nice and waterproof. Parts are easy to get. We think it's also a pretty good idea to have a master switch for this inside the rig. We have ours mounted right here on our uh, outlet panel. Well, there you have it. A huge convenience that didn't cost a whole heck of a lot of money. We're not the ones who came up with this system. It's actually been around for years. We first heard about it from a site called Living Overland. So a big thanks goes out to them. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Before you leave, be sure to hit the subscribe button.